Now, this is a long question. It says, draw the resonance structures for the following compounds. Show the electron shift using curved arrow notation. Okay. So, and please note, this is a very fundamental exercise in organic chemistry. You will always need it. So, let us start drawing. I will advise you in case you feel lazy about it, you have to draw this thing nicely and properly. If you, do, if you try shortcuts in this, uh, you will always have problems when it comes to learning organic properly. So, my very sincere suggestion, uh, please do not try shortcuts with this, you must write it down nicely. What are you up to? I am just writing down the skeleton structure of phenol. What do you mean by the skeleton structure? I am just writing down sigma bonds, I am not writing down lone pairs, I am not writing down pi bonds. Fine. First I have made this. Of course, phenol in the full glory is this. These are not the final structures, but I am going to draw more. What happens? You find the way when you are trying out delocalization, this jumps and it shifts here. Please note, if the lone pair is getting delocalized, the arrow must begin from lone pair and it is converting to a bond. So, arrow must finish in the middle of this bond. So, this is how I am going to draw this. And since this pi bond jumps away, so this arrow should start in the middle of the bond and the arrow must end at the corner because this is where the lone pair has to come. Oh my god, that way, yes. What about these two? These two are not changed. They just remain as they are. This is curved arrow notation. Yes, yes, this is curved arrow notation and this is how we do the delocalization. Okay. Sometimes people encircle it so that the electrons are not lost. Otherwise, it is not necessary. I am just copying this is the old stuff and I get something new here. Yes. And what happens then? This can jump up like this and this can come back here. Right? And the last step. Well, the mummy returns. This is what you get. So please note, first and last are not the same. Why? Double here, it is only single here. So, if benzene ring you rotate, you will get 1 and 5. 1 and 5 are equivalent structures. They have same energy, but they are not same. Please note. These are the 5 structures, contributing structures of phenol. Now, B is a group, which is an electron withdrawing group, an auto group. And let us see how does B fare. Let us take a look. Well, we have benzene ring being attached to NO2. My dears, first of all, please learn this is the structure of NO2 group. This NO2 group you can attach anywhere you like, like this. This is NO2 group. So, every time you do not start discovering NO2 from 0, it is easier to just learn it like this, right? And now, when we have this NO2 group, how does it behave as an electron withdrawing group? So, it takes away electrons from benzene ring like this. Oh, wow. Now, what happens? Well, I have N, I have plus here like this. Nitrogen retains its formal plus charge always, that is ok. I have now a plus charge on benzene ring. What next? Well, nothing great. Uh, life is a full circle, so it keeps on rotating. It moves to ortho and then it is moving to para. I hope you can see that. Very typical gesture of uh, delocalization in the benzene ring. One more and what do I get? I get once again a positive charge on ortho location. Please note it has not touched meta location. It is like ortho, para, ortho and then back again. Back again would be well uh, this can come back and this can go here. So, what do I get? 
I would get n o like this. <coughs> I have one, two, three, four, five. That's quite phenol like, is it all? No, there is a special catch. Now, please note that in these two, yeah, in number two, three, and four, you have NO2 minus like stuff here, it is ok. But in 1 and 5, do you see that internally also a delocalization is possible? What does that mean? I will just show you here. I do not have a space this, I am writing here. I am just copying 1 as it is. Please note 1 and 5 are not same. Double here, single here. Benzene ring has rotated in 1 and 5. 1 and 5 are not same, they have same energy but the structures are different. Now, <coughs> instead, instead of double single, I could have written double here and single here right like this. So, I also have 6 and I also have a 7th structure 5 what is that means I am just changing spaces yeah places of double and single bond in NO2 group ping tang. So, I get 7 contributing structures my dear for nitrobenzene like this. Now, when we see C and D, benzene ring with CHO. Now, CHO group is very similar and let us let us skip C for the timing, we will come back to C, but I think it will be much easier if we finish D now itself, shall we? Yes, there is a hint. See, this is NO2 group, right? CHO is like this. Instead of this O, and lone pairs, I just have H, but the bond is single. Instead of N, I get carbon, and there is no plus charge. This is a difference, and this is that you know similarity also kind of. What do you wish to say? I wish to say that I am going to convert these structures of NO2, yeah, nitrobenzene to benzaldehyde. Watch, it's a very good trick. I'm just getting rid of these nitrogens, lovely though they may be, but of course there is not going to be any plus charge on them very much. Yeah. Now, also one that O minus is no longer needed, I will have a hydrogen here, okay. So, you are removing this, yeah. In the same effort you can actually redraw this. Then why are you not redrawing? I am, I have drawn it thousands of times, do not worry about me. I am just trying to show you a similarity between different structures. Essential structures are A and B only. All of the structures my dear you will note are just variations, nothing new. Like, let me come to this. Hmm. See, you have, just put CHO, this is benzaldehyde, yeah, benzaldehyde, benzaldehyde benzaldehyde and benzaldehyde. Fascinating. These are the five structures of, well, benzaldehyde. You have it here. But you skip C. C also you will notice is very similar and much easier than D. But D was very easy. C is even easier. How is it? I will tell you how is it. Just wait for a moment. Let me clean some space. I will solve it for you here itself. <coughs> Why you could use another page? No, I just wish to compare and this comparison would be very useful and very enlightening for you, that is why I am just trying to use the same space on the same page, so that we are also on the same page literally, right? See, take a look. <coughs> this is CH3, CH, double bond CH, CHO, it is like this, right? Now, if you just compare, well, uh, I could have also drawn it in a different style. I could have just drawn it like this. This is compound C. Do you see that this is not very different from L? Yeah. yeah. So, this is one contributing structure. I can write it like this or I could just make it jump, yeah, and write it like
Are these the contributing structures? Yes, these are the contributing structures of, of, of course, C. Oh my God, that's it. That's it. What about the top one? No, the top one is not there. It is just same as, I mean, this is nothing new. One, two, and three. And this is all. These are the contributing structures of C. So I hope you can see that we have covered A, B, C, and D till this point. And let's turn to E and F. I have just made some skeletons so that we save some time for quick structure writing. It is benzyl cation. This E part was benzyl cation. It is this. And well, pi bond, shadak. It goes that side. I get CH2 here and a plus charge here, of course. And this plus charge can again go on this side. Well, this is very benzaldehyde-ish. Indeed it is. And it just keeps on and on. The fun never stops, literally. And, and this is all what we get. We get five structures for benzyl cation like this. One, two, three, four, five. What about the F part? F part is even simpler. F part contains this. One, two, three, four butenyl cation okay then just jump it yeah make it jump that's all <laughs> that's all these are the two contributing structures for f